Um, <clears throat> so I'll be talking about uh, the ultimate precision. And uh, I'll start with the uh, discussion about uh, uh, the conclusions of the uh, reproducibility initiative paper. And uh, the uh, conclusion, what you can read from the paper, is that all the data uh, in the entire periodic table uh, agree quite well uh, on average, especially for L all electron data. And uh, this is the part uh, that I'll be uh, focusing on. And uh, this whole discussion was based on the delta tests, which I will not try to define. And one of the reasonings why this conclusion was supposed to be valid is uh, that the most results fit within uh, one millivolt per atom, which corresponds to experimental uncertainty for, uh, for gold. Uh, now, uh, now, if we uh, plot uh, the worst case scenario, so the same table, uh, and I try to keep the, the uh, similar color coding, uh, which I, I'm not sure if I succeeded, uh, but the point here is that I plotted the worst agreement for, for the same codes represented in this table. And you see that uh, uh, it's, it's not that good anymore, right? And um, uh, here, for instance, you see that uh, the minimum uh, deviation in this worst case scenario is 0.8, uh, which is between uh, exciting and FHI aims, but otherwise uh, it goes up to 5 uh, ele milli electron volts per atom. So if we, the question is, uh, are we uh, entirely satisfied uh, with this? And uh, um, uh, what, what do we do about those cases? And can we actually systematically prove uh, uh, which, which results make, uh, make sense uh, more? Uh, and um, and uh, which... Uh, uh, and how, how to reach this uh, uh, ultimate precision where we have no doubts about which uh, benchmark to, to choose uh, in, for, for uh, uh, designing, say, pseudopotentials or, or other <laughs> methods. Yeah, and here you get an overview which elements are the responsible ones uh, uh, so I think this uh, reminds you uh, of something that Kurt has shown yesterday where he was uh, showing the outliers, but, but here you can uh, uh, get, get a, a similar kind of insight from, from this table. Right, and then another example just to illustrate that uh, maybe not everything is uh, entirely solved and would, would really need to think how to systematically improve our, our data is an example of a BCC iron. So the red circles correspond to the uh, data published in the Delta test, plus those that you can find uh, on the uh, website of, uh, of the initiative. And then you see that uh, this cloud of uh, uh, the red circles is actually quite uh, extended. And these are experimental data summarized in this paper. And you see that if you calculate uh, uh, root mean square deviation for, for, uh, for them in both cases, for uh, lattice constants and for the bulk moduli, uh, you see that uh, computational uncertainty uh, is not uh, uh, sufficient yet. Not sufficiently small, that's what I mean. In comparison to experiment, uh, the scattering of, of the data uh, is not... Uh, uh, that good compared to experiment. And this was our enti uh, entire reasoning in the paper that, uh, uh, you know what, uh, we, we achieve uh, uh, already sufficient uh, precision. So basically what I'm trying to show here is that we have uh, room for improvement and uh, we definitely can do better. And now again, if we talk about all electron data which are supposed to be uh, uh, taken as a reference, you see that if you take uh, uh, the data from all the papers, they are also scattered all over the place. And uh, the, the data from the Delta paper and uh, additional ones that you can find in the history in, uh, in the web page from the Delta initiative, you see they are still quite uh, scattered. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, 
the uh, correct answer is, uh, is about here. So this is what uh, you're supposed to get once you, uh, once you converge everything. So on one hand, you see that it's not in the middle of this cloud. Uh, the second thing is, is uh, one of the data points uh, that is furthest away from experiment. So just uh, to contribute to, to the previous uh, conversations. So uh, I said uh, the exact uh, result. Where do we get the exact uh, uh, result from? So in my case, I claim that uh, we're able to get uh, exact reference from LAPW plus LO. So LAPW plus LO stands for linearized segmented plane waves plus local orbitals. And what we do, we partition uh, the space in the interstitial region and atomic spheres, which we call sometimes also muffin tins. And uh, the basis consists of uh, two parts, uh, which is LAPWs, which are just plane waves in the interstitial, and then we replace them by linear combination of atomic-like uh, orbitals in the muffin tin. And in case of orbitals, uh, we have uh, just atomic-like uh, 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 functions just in the muffin tin and strictly zero in the interstitial region. So this is what, what we do. And our recipe is just saturate your basis everywhere. So the point is that you need to have a uh, enough uh, of plane waves in the interstitial region, and then you need to have a sufficient amount a proper, a properly chosen of uh, local orbitals and, uh, uh, well, basically atomic-like functions in the uh, muffin tins. So let's see how that works out. Uh, so here I consider an oxygen atom, which is a fairly tough example because uh, oxygen atom is uh, uh, magnetic and uh, uh, it means that it also is uh, non-spherical. So if you, if you try to uh, not to preserve the spherical symmetry, you realize that uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, this character that you would have uh, uh, you know, S for S and P electrons. So P electrons, uh, they acquire a bit of a D, a bit of of uh, F uh, character, so basically they, uh, they are not strictly P electrons anymore. And uh, this is what we have to respect, and when we construct our set of local orbitals, uh, we actually see that it's not enough to stop at uh, uh, maximum angular momentum of one, which would correspond to P, and uh, which, give, which would give us 100 micro Hartree error. We need to in, uh, increase the basis and add the, those local orbitals for higher L channels. Uh, and this is not GW, this is just uh, uh, the, the ground state DFT. Uh, but as I said, this is a difficult case. And uh, uh, once you, you do all these gymnastics, you end up uh, having one micro heart tree uh, level of convergence uh, uh, for, with respect to local orbitals. With respect to LAPWs, it's very simple. You just crank up the dimension, uh, dimensionless LAPW cutoff. And you see that uh, convergence is very predictable. And uh, you get uh, sub-micro Hartree precision uh, quite easily. Of course, if you can afford it. Um, now, um, th this was just a demonstration how we reach uh, uh, the convergence of uh, of total energy strictly within our code, uh, but, but then the question is how do we verify it? Because you may uh, converge to, to some result, but how do you know if that's the correct one? And uh, here we have uh, three different scenarios, which are atoms, molecules, and solids. And then what we do for atoms and molecules, we cross-check our results with, with other codes, which can provide us a sufficient uh, level of precision. And uh, uh, one option is uh, multi-resolution analysis for both of them. And LCAO we can use uh, just for, for atoms. And then in case of solids, uh, we don't really have alternative tools uh, with, uh, where you could reach arbitrary precision. So this is why we have to perform basis completeness test, which uh, basically means that uh, we uh, alter the size of atomic spheres 
and then there would be a region which in one case would be represented by plane waves, in another case it would be represented by uh, atomic orbitals or atomic-like orbitals. And uh, uh, from this comparison you can say we have an independent check for that reason, uh, for that region which, uh, uh, which should hint us if uh, we have a problem. Okay, so we uh, test the total energies of light atoms and then we see that uh, we get a deviation of order uh, 1 to 2 uh, micro -hartree. so basically we, we can get a very high precision in these calculations in, uh, and uh, this comes from a comparison with the uh, multi-resolution analysis in, in the Madness Code and LCAO in, in WCAM. And we see a similar result uh, for molecules. So this is G to one set of uh, 55 molecules. And this is not per atom. This is the total deviation. So we really reach uh, absolute precision of uh, order one micro -hartree in these calculations. Uh, then we perform this kind of test uh, uh, that I explained with the basis completeness uh, uh, for uh, BCC iron and we see that we need to, uh, to go to pretty high uh, LABW cutoff uh, but then once we do uh, it we see uh, an astonishing uh, agreement for volumes, uh, bulk moduli and pressure uh, derivatives uh, for the range of muffin tins varying in a, in a quite impressive range. So we conclude that, yeah, and this is a, a total energy relative to, uh, to this, uh, uh, this configuration where we took the smallest muffin in radius. So you see, also here we get one micro tree precision. And then if we go back to the, uh, to the delta tests, uh, uh, we actually can compare our calculations with large and small muffin tin radii and the way we have constructed the basis is such that uh, we see there's no, no dependence. So this was our proof that uh, our calculation was already so much converged that, uh, uh, that we, uh, disagreement between our uh, results of different kinds with large and uh, small muffin tins is well under 0.1 millivolt per, per atom. So uh, if you uh, would like to look it up, uh, you can find all those data in NOMAD and also those uh, uh, previous calculations with molecules you can find uh, uh, in NOMAD. Uh, finally, since I still have a bit of time, I can discuss uh, uh, the same uh, kind of tests uh, that we perform for fu fully relativistic calculations because in fully relativistic case you have to acknowledge that you cannot use uh, the scalar relativistic basis anymore if you want to to have a uh, high precision and uh, this is what we obtain for gold and here uh, what I show are different cutoffs uh, for LAPWs and you see once we reach convergence uh, we are pretty much in this uh, uh, one uh, micro Hartree limit for total energies. So here, the uh, total energy is given with respect to, to the lowest uh, energy obtained in, in, in a series of calculations. And uh, here you see deviation more than one uh, uh, micro Hartree uh, simply for the reason that uh, the sphere is so small that core electrons start to leak uh, and uh, this uh, contributes uh, sufficiently to, to this uh, deviation. But otherwise if you make sure that, uh, so basically you go beyond the, the, the permitted boundary. Uh, finally, how does it translate to uh, the uh, equation of state calculation? So you see again, you obtain extremely stable results for volume also bulk moduli and pressure derivatives and uh, in most cases uh, the minimum energy obtained in Hartree is, is uh, converged already to the uh, one micro Hartree level so in, in all these cases that uh, are highlighted here it's a one micro Hartree agreement and 
And uh, uh, the most impressive part about it is that uh, this, this is 11th digit that we are looking at. And finally, I'm coming to uh, acknowledgement. So I acknowledge people who have collaborated with me from HU Berlin and uh, Swiss Supercomputing Center, as well as uh, NOMAD. And finally, uh, I would like to summarize my results. So high precision in all, all electron calculations cannot be granted. It requires that everything is properly uh, converged. And we demonstrate that uh, uh, the micro Hartree precision in our calculations really can be achieved in all three cases. Uh, yeah, and then finally we use uh, either other tools for cross-checking or we use the duality of uh, LAPW basis just to really motivate uh, that uh, uh, the, the result that we obtain is really the, uh, uh, the, the final one. Okay, thank you very much.